is he? Dude, we're on in five. Good afternoon, folks, and welcome to the lab. Welcome. here the helium neon laser which is mounted on a stage that has both y translation and x translation right here we've got our optical rail which constrains all movement except in the c axis and then right here we have the star of the show which is our iris which is stopped down almost all the way um close as it can go and what we do is we take the iris we put it close to the laser and we're going to use the translation features of the laser um to align the laser right through the iris hole and then we're going to take the iris, we're going to move it all the way down here, and we're going to use the tip and the tilt features here on these laser knobs to get that beam to go right to both of them, so that no matter where the iris is, our beam is parallel in the line of the axis. So here we have our setup. Our laser is perfectly aligned parallel to the table. But how do we confirm whether this is actually aligned parallel to the ground? So what we do is we put a pentaprism here. And a pentaprism always causes a 90 degree deviation. And that 90 degree deviation will always be perfect because of the nature of a pentaprism. And so here, we see that the light is being shined into a, a bowl of water. And this bowl of water represents a perfectly level surface because water will always be parallel to the ground. So what we see is that the laser light is being reflected back from the water surface and onto the laser. And what we see is that the alignment is not perfect. And therefore the table is a not aligned perfectly according to gravity. So the purpose of a cubed beam splitter, shown right here, is to make one beam go this way and to reflect one beam out like that. But how do we know that our beams are exactly orthogonal to each other? Well, we did this setup to find out. We first took the laser and we aligned it with this mirror so that the reflection from the mirror went right back into the laser cap so we know that these are perfectly aligned. Then, put our, put our cubed beam splitter in the optical cap. That cubed beam splitter should split the laser light to here and to here. So part of it is going to reflect off the mirror and part of it is going to get deflected off to the side. The part that gets reflected off the mirror will then come back here and also get deflected out the side. So we're going to see one spot from the original laser beam and also a back reflection spot. Right now, the two beams are coincident upon each other, but if I take this and tilt it, we can see there are actually two beams coming in here on top of each other. That means that our thing is perfectly orthogonal because the two beams are overlapping. We have our red laser, we have our green laser, we have our pentaprism for a 90 degree deflection of the beam path this way into the cube beam splitter, which allows red to go this way red to go that way, green to come this way, and green to go that way. If we align everything perfectly, which we have, um, we see two overlapping spots, and the red and the green kind of add together to produce a really lovely orangey yellow color. So what we have done here is we have created essentially a Keplerian telescope, and we have done that by placing a 75 millimeter lens and a 500 millimeter lens, 575 millimeters apart. And so here we have one intermediate focal point, which is the 75 millimeter focusing here. And then we have that light diverging into this lens, which then creates a collimated beam of light, which we can see if we take a card and we see that the beam size is not changing at all, but it is significantly larger than the original size over here. So what we did is we attached our microscope equipped with an eyepiece to uh, a translation stage. And this allowed us to precisely rotate the microscope. And after aligning it by subsequently doing a rotation and tip and tilt, we were able to end up with um, the crosshairs lining up with the crosshairs of the reticle. One important note is that we chose a numerical aperture that was the lowest possible. And the reason why we did this is because we did not want the beam to diverge quickly. And because of that, we're able to see our light source on the screen instead of it being so faint and so large that we don't see anything at all. 
And for the second portion of the microscope part in this lab, um, we inserted a 75 millimeter plane of convex lens in between the laser and the microscope here. And the goal is to maintain the alignment. So without changing the alignment of the laser or of the microscope, we needed to make sure that the uh, radical crosshairs were aligned with our original beam placement using the tip tilt functions and translation mount functions of the lens itself. And you can see here that we have successfully done that alignment. So we've had a great time doing this lab, and overall, one of the main things that I've learned is the importance of having a set screw on these devices. Because if these things are not locked down, we are not able to properly control the degrees of freedom. It's really all about the control and the degrees of freedom that we have. So it's really important to know exactly how many degrees of freedom we need in order to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. And then just how to implement that, the procedure. So, yeah. Really nicely said, Katie, and we'll see you in the next one.